Unit 4, thermal resistance. Okay, now what is thermal resistance? We've been talking about resistance for a while now. And and remember what resistance is. It, it's not going to allow all right, whatever it is to go through. In this case, we're talking about thermal. So we're saying that we're not going to allow heat to flow through something. And the example that you have here is you see a house and you should have insulation. All right, here's your siding and your insulation. What happens is that between your siding and your insulation, hopefully you're keeping out uh, all the, uh, well, actually all the heat, uh, keep that out, and then can in the wintertime keep all the heat inside. All right, so the same thing is actually happening on this side as well. All right, so it limits heat flow. Very important. All right, examples. There are times when you want heat to flow. For example, a car radiator. All right, you want it to give off the heat easily to the air. Okay, that's what you want it to do. If you have um, a radiator in your house, you want it to give off the heat so that it warms the house. But then there are those times that you want um, it to keep it inside, all right, to not to move. And that would be like um, a refrigerator truck. Here we have a picture of an ice cream truck. All right, now to keep that ice cream so that it doesn't melt, then you better have a truck that's not going to allow the easy flow of the heat. Makes sense, right? Car radiator, you want the heat to leave so that your car doesn't overheat. So you want to give it off. That's called low, low thermal resistance. High thermal is when you want to keep all right, the heat where it is. Keep the cold where it is. You don't want it transferring. All right, the equation for t thermal resistance is temperature difference over heat flow rate. And here we have a chart. All right, your thermal resistance is going to be your R with your subscript of T to tell you what type of resistance. You got your delta T for your temperature difference and your cube sub H for heat flow. All right, and then if you look at our, um, our units here, we have temperature difference over heat flow rate. So we're going to have Fahrenheit degrees over BTUs per minute for thermal resistance, which we do, and Celsius degrees over calories per minute, all right, for your thermal resistance. Now, question for you. Notice, this is an old, old thing, so a little quick review here. Notice that the degree symbol is on this side of the Fahrenheit. Aren't we used to seeing it over here? What is it doing over there? Is it a typo? No, it's not a typo. All right, it's on this side because you're talking about temperature difference. That means that you've actually already subtracted two temperatures. That's basically is a signal so that you know that the subtraction has already taken place and that what you're dealing with is temperature difference, not temperature. All right, that's something important to remember uh, from way back when. All right, let's take a look at a problem. What is the thermal resistance of a window that has a temperature change of 80 Celsius degrees and heat flow rate of 20 calories per second? Okay, and our equation is going to be our change in temperature over our heat flow. So our change in temperature is going to be our 80 Celsius degrees and our heat flow is going to be 20 calories per second. And that gives you 40 uh, Celsius degrees per calories per second. So that's going to be your thermal resistance. All right, thermal conductivity. We've talked about conductivity before. All right, when you see that word, basically, you know that whatever it is you're talking about is going to flow through it easily. And, and what's funny is that if you look at electrical and you look at heat, they're very similar in what happens. Um, Things that are generally going to be uh, conductive for electricity are also going to be conductive for heat as well. Okay, so this value indicates how fast energy flows through material. And here's uh, a formula. We've seen this one before. This was in the last unit. All right, your heat flow rate equals your K, which is thermal conductivity, times A, which is area, times your change in temperature, all right, divided by L, which is thickness. 
All right, and we have our variables here again, and here we have our units. And again, this is just a review. All right, keep in mind some things that you need to remember. Area is always going to be length, that's squared. Heat flow rate is going to be an energy over time. Okay, uh, your thickness is going to be just um, like inches or centimeters. In, in other words, it's not going to have a square or a cube or anything like that on it. And then your thermal conductivity is a standard for a particular type of material. And this big unit here has all those units in there so that when you multiply them together and you divide, you will end up with BTUs per minute. Okay, so we're going to just review this with a problem. A piece of window glass is four square feet. Uh, it's one eighth of an inch thick. Uh, the thermal conductivity of the glass is five BTU inches per square foot Fahrenheit degree hour. Uh, the temperature difference is 60 Fahrenheit degrees. What's the heat flow rate? So this is our equation. All right, thermal conductivity is the 5, the BTU inch per square foot Fahrenheit degree hour. Area is 4 square feet, and your temperature difference is 60 Fahrenheit degrees. Divide that by 1 eighth inch, all right, and you will get 9,600 BTUs per hour. Okay. All right, new equation. Thermal resistance going to be your thickness or length divided by your thermal conductivity times your area. So the product of K and A are going to be in your denominator. All right, you're going to see that you're you're dealing with the same units that you were before. Okay. So we have the same statement that we had before, the same problem, but this time we want to know what is the thermal conductivity. All right, we already did the heat flow rate, so it should actually should say what is the, the thermal resistance. So you're going to take 1 eighth of an inch, divide that by 5 BTU inch per square foot Fahrenheit degree hour, uh, give you 4 square feet, all right, and then what you end up with is 0 0.00625 Fahrenheit degrees per BTU per hour. All right, and you might be wondering how that all works out. All right, uh, it, it can get a little confusing because you're going to have things that are canceling out, but the thing is because you have a fraction here in the denominator, it's actually going to flip the units, and that's what happens there. All right, resistivity. As you probably guessed, it's the inverse of conductivity. All right, so resistivity is 1 divided by conductivity. That's what inverse means. Same thing for conductivity. Conductivity is 1 over resistivity. Or if we rearrange that one equation, we've got K equals, all right, your heat flow rate, all right, times your thickness, divided by area, times delta T. All right. Let's talk about some applications here. What they call R factor or R value. You know, what does it look like this guy is doing? All right, he's putting in insulation. All right, now if you've ever gone to any of the stores that sell insulation, you'll see that there is a number value that is attached to them. All right, that number assigned indicates the relative insulating value of different materials. All right, for example, if you have R11 insulation, all right, what does it mean? All right, basically it means this. If the temperature difference is 11 Fahrenheit degrees, all right, and that's established across the two sides. So in other words, you've taken the two temperatures, you subtracted them, all right, and you end up with 11 Fahrenheit degrees. All right, across the two sides of the insulating material, then one BTU of heat passes through one square foot of face, all right, meaning here, face, area, each hour. Okay, so that basically means that if you get the R11, you got a temperature difference of 11 Fahrenheit degrees, and it means that you'll get one BTU of heat passing through one square foot, all right, of the face of the material uh, each hour. 
Now, the thing is that you need to know about R values is that there's many different types of insulation. There is glass fiber, there's rock wool, there's the loose stuff which um, it's poured in. Uh, you have glass fiber, you have rock wool, you have um, uh, cellulosic fiber. All right, and depending on what type you use, um, like for example, R, if you want R11 of glass fiber, all right, the fiberglass, all right, you're going to need three and a half inches to four inches for your R11, all right, where you um, need three inches if you use the rock wool. You need five inches thickness if you use the glass fiber, four inch thickness if you use rock wool, and only three inches if you use uh, cellulosic fiber. Okay, so it's going to depend, you know, each type is going to have a different thickness. Now, what if you wanted to double your R value? So if we went R22, all right? You know, what is that going to mean? Well, that means that your temperature difference is going to be 22 Fahrenheit degrees this time. Okay. And then basically um, for one BTU of heat to pass through one square foot each hour. Okay. And what's interesting is that the thickness to do that, you would double it. So, like, let's say that you, um, you have R11 and you want R22. Okay, you would have to double up your insulation. You'd have to have six and a half inches at least, all right, of the glass fiber and then six inches of the rock wall. Okay, so that's kind of interesting and you may think you may never use it, but um, one of the things that I have found is that uh, many times when we say, oh, I never need that, no, that information, um, you get a house. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you need to know. And I've, I've said that throughout the course. Uh, it's amazing what you do need to know when you own a house. Either that or you better have a lot of money so somebody else can come in and fix stuff for you. Okay, thermal resistance is important. Why? Anytime you want to keep anything hot or cold. You know, there are those times that you want things to give off heat or to gain heat quickly and that would be your radiator in your house or here what, what they're doing is they're cooking okay or over here alright now depending on what this was if this were set onto a stove you'd want it to heat quickly but what if it was one of those insulated ones for your coffee well then you would want to keep the heat in alright same thing here you got a refrigerator unit you want to keep the cold in, you want to keep the heat out. All right, what about going on those picnics? All right, you're going to have your your um, thermos here, or not thermos, but um, your carrier here that's insulated. All right, you want to keep everything cold. You even have your cold packs to put in there. All right, you want to keep the heat out, you want to keep the cold in. All right, and other applications of uh, where you would use it. Um, if you are working for an excavation company and you're putting in pipe, all right, um, water lines need to be below the frost line so they don't freeze. If you are a um, plumber, all right, uh, in the wintertime, depending on where you, you live, uh, you might need to have insulation on your pipes so they don't freeze. Uh, when I was a kid where we lived, it was pretty cold. And uh, one of the things that we had trouble with was pipes freezing. So you need to have them insulated. Uh, a doer flask, which is a thermos. If you had hot soup in there, you want to keep that hot soup warm. And then uh, fire brick in a furnace. All right, If you work for a uh, cogeneration plant where they had a furnace. They have uh, special bricks that they use in the furnace uh, to keep reflecting that heat back back in. All right, so it does not get transferred to the rest of the building. All right, so there's a lot of uh, applications. These are just a, a few of them. Uh, but that wraps up our unit four thermal resistance. Have a good week.